power drink at 11 a.m. Yeah, and 11 they loved bar. they loved that that the a movie was being made for about an hour and a half. And, yeah, then, and then they realized they have to be quiet. When we started shushing them and started being like, can you move out of the shot a little bit? And then like, you know, telling them like, when they're like talking during some of the scenes, yeah. we're like, hey guys, can you, can you? And <laughs> then people started to get a little irritated yeah. with us and started to get a little bit of an attitude. That's not everybody, but there was yeah. like a couple people who were like suddenly not happy that we were there yeah. and became one of many situations where it went from, this is really cool to guys, we gotta get out of here. True, true. That is, that's usually what that is. They're like, oh, I got this tattoo, and guess I'll just turn this into a, they, a black they were, Well, I mean, now they've got yeah. white ink that they can do the cool uh, yeah, Exactly, you do the blackout, stuff, and like, then you get white ink, and then it's like reverse. I like, can't think of who it is right this second, but somebody we know has like such a cool blackout pattern yeah. that like I like get lost in it. It's so detailed. You're like, is that get 3D? Sick. Yeah. Yeah, I got uh, real sick. It hypnotizes you, dude. I, 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 I got sick from both ends when I was looking at it, and it was like... I wonder if that's what they were hoping for. It's like a trick they They were like, give me a tattoo that when people yeah. stare at it, they throw up. Yeah. And, 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 and the guy, while he's doing it, he's like... <laughs> 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 he, has be, he has to like clean and sanitize it. He just keeps puking on the open He did too Sorry. good a job Sorry. on it. He's like, <laughs> it took five times yeah. longer than I got normal. really sick. <laughs> Violent vomit. Yeah, he was puking in my open uh, wound. It's awful. Oh For those of you at home hearing construction sounds in the backwards, you can think... Caleb, because he had to build a gigantic barbecue. I mean, I didn't do that, but I mean, I think we agree that's going to be very beneficial. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> We're going to do a lot of big barbecue it's parties. It's like two and a half stories Those tall. Those did you choose these beams? Did you specific? <laughs> when I saw them out there, I was like, did he specifically say, I want four foot by four foot beams <laughs> <laughs> that are 15 feet tall? No, uh, here's what happened. I walked, I walked out today as they're erecting them, and Bob, our project site manager that built where we're in now, yeah. uh, I was like, wow, those are big. He goes, you said fucking cool, man, and I know how to do cool. <laughs> oh, okay. okay, so you just told him, like, cool beans. I said, I said, he's like, all right. This thing better look Entire cool. trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like, no, I said cool beans. Yeah, cool beans. I, I meant, like, it's beans, a barbecue dude, place. Yeah. Like, oh, sorry. Well, it's too late. They're already up. So, four I mean, and a half we're, were very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> four and a half <laughs> acres of, of forest out yeah. of Brazil is missing to Those build like your barbecue pit. $10,000 beams. <laughs> Are you be, sure? Dude, those have I haven't to be looked so, at the price. Of I know you haven't. Those have to be so expensive. Those are probably so crazy expensive. Oh. Like, right, and 100 grand for the four beams. What? You didn't do like a cartoon drawing and then you were like, I mean, they'll make this realistic, they'll you know? And then he was like, really no, like, oh, this is what I have I to need, build. This I guess is he wants rainforest trees. Like, very, very These are all redwoods. Like leopard wood. Yeah, what? what? <laughs> yeah. Leopards really bled on this wood yeah. and it creates that red. We had to <laughs> kill leopards for this. Well, dude, no. Oh, well, um, we, we, we have Matt here with yeah. us. What's yeah. up, guys? Matt Matthew. Yeah. This is the first time we've ever even acknowledged a guest, by the way, on this show. I feel honored. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. it, it, it's because we have a we have a fun episode here with you because we're gonna we're gonna get into some good stories. Yeah, you yeah. just finished and released a full feature film. I did. That's it. Applause, please. Yeah, that's if you're in your car. Cool. Yeah. clap, clap right now. Take both clap. hands off the wheel. <laughs> well, both hands clap. off the wheel. <laughs> Close clap your eyes clap. for thirty Close seconds. Close your eyes. Thirty and seconds just... of clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stare with your knees. Yeah. So we can see you. And then you can put your hands back on the wheel. Because because it is such a feat yeah. to to do this. That is a yeah. big deal. That's a big deal to go from uh, like starting out as an internet creator yeah. uh, personality and then doing a movie. Yeah. So that's like awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. And the last time that I was here, um, I had gotten to talk to you about the experience of your feature film. And <laughs> like, I mean, I was probably very angry. You yeah. were, you had some things to say about it, about like what went right and what went wrong and what you were angry about. And, uh, and I understood and, um, I understood theoretically, yes. but now I've actually, now, 
Now it, it, it's like you've been to war, and you and I can talk about war together. Uh, yeah, and I respect your, your what you're saying back. Yeah. Not the, not with the oh yeah, I bet I bet that will be like I bet I bet, I bet I'll be great. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. No, no, it's exactly that because I like uh, I've done a ton of meetings over the years, having like worked as an actor and having the master chem thing as well, yeah. um, doing that and had meetings where maybe we were going to make a movie, and then the thing that would stop the conversation was always like, okay, well, show us the movies that you've done. And I'm like, oh, no, no, see, like, I'm in the meeting now because mm -hmm. I need the money and you guys have to do the thing. And they're like, yeah. oh, no, 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 you have to go do one. And I was like, what, what about this YouTube channel that yeah. I have? What about these award-winning short films? Yeah. And they'd be like, it's not the same. And I'd be like, that's oh, bullshit. Yeah. It's not the same. And now that I've done it, it's not the same. Mm. <laughs> like, I get, I get it now. Yeah. Like, I yeah. get why they want to see if you can get through the I process. Mean, first yeah. off, just finishing it. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Because when you're talking to somebody, you know, me specifically too, there's plenty of people that ask me to like, hey, will you come in and finance the project, thing like that. It's always like, show me what you finished first. Yeah. Like, and if it's like, yep. oh, well, I haven't yet, like, mm, I get it. Talk about this later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I totally get it because there were so many times through the the preparation of this, the shooting of this, the editing of this, and the negotiating, the distribution of this, where I was like, this is never going to come out. Yeah. Where this is going to be a, a learning movie yeah. that no one ever sees, that doesn't get completed, or it can't be released because of this reason or that reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it was officially on, Amazon and out, I was like, wow, this incredible yeah. relief of like, oh my God, it's actually, yeah. we did it. Yeah, we right. actually did it. Awesome. But up until the moment that happened, I was like, it's not going to happen. It's not going to, there's going to be a reason yeah. why, why we can't release this. Because I guess it's, it's good because you were just kind of like prepared in case of a letdown. Oh of yeah. Sort. So you weren't. No. How many times did you want to quit? <laughs> oh my God. Like I, I was telling, I was. I wouldn't say quit. I would say, how many times did you want to give up? Yeah, yeah, and and it's weird because like once you're there's with a with a filmmaking journey, it's like there is a pushing the boulder up the hill part, and then there's a chasing the boulder down the other side. Where like now you couldn't stop it if you wanted to. Where yeah, it's yeah. like, well, this thing. I mean, you know, the money's being spent, and like people are showing up and all this stuff, and and that was. That was a lot. I was telling you guys last, some of you guys last night that uh, I would get to the hotel room at the end of every shooting day, and sometimes, often, I was alone because my girlfriend was who was producing it was out like putting out fires. Yeah, and I would say to an empty room, I would just go nine more days, eight more days, <laughs> seven more days because I couldn't. The, the schedule was so tight. Yeah, if if we lost a day to weather, if somebody got hurt, yeah. if, if, if we just couldn't shoot a day, we weren't going to finish the film because mm -hmm. it was already too tight of a schedule. Because we did the whole movie in 10 days, <laughs> oh, wow. which was, it wasn't what I wanted. It was just, we couldn't afford to pay anybody for any longer. Sure. So it was like the people that we absolutely needed to pay to be there were going to be there for two weeks. That was the best we yeah. could do. And so every single day I was like, and, and every single day started with a, a, a potential disaster that was going to shut down the entire production every day that had to be solved before we could mm. move forward. Yeah. And, and because, and, and I was amazed at how many of those we could fit into 10 days. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it was, we, we lost our lo our first location of our first day, the day before we were supposed to shoot. And like the guy who had agreed to it, like, didn't know anything about the movie, even though we told him and like explained it. And I think we might've even sent him the script. And then he like called and he's like, you're going to get blood all over my place. And I was like, well, A, no, we're not. And B, like we, we explained this to you. And he was like, you can't shoot here. And so we just hopped on Airbnb and locked another location, which turned out to be a hundred times better oh. than what we were going to do. That was the thing that we also learned was that every single roadblock that came up led us to something better. better. Whatever we had planned well, as long as we so, were. But also understand because of where you were at, you were able to do this. Yes. Like if you were in California absolutely, and you tried to get on Airbnb, yeah. yep. the second they see C stands get, yep. or cases yep. loaded, they freaking, yep. now it's, it's, you're not shooting here or the rate for a location is actually $20,000. Exactly. And that's, that's even happened a little bit in Albuquerque because Albuquerque bought ABQ studios out by the airport and they're running a ton of productions through Albuquerque because it's so cost effective. And now people who own locations in Albuquerque have gotten a little savvy. 
Mm-hmm. It used, you used to be able to walk into like a, a, a business and be like, hey, we're making a little indie film. And they'd be like, oh, okay, we'll give you a hundred bucks. Or, you know, they like, oh, cool. You know, that'll be fun. And now they're like, I want $5,000. Yeah. And it's like, oh, see the difference. And they don't care what that. You can be like, no, no, no. See, the difference is like Netflix has like $100 million and like we have like $5. We don't. And <laughs> they, they don't care. Yeah. And, uh, but we were filming in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, two and a half hours south of Albuquerque. And it was a big deal. Yeah. They, people were thrilled that we were there. It was exciting. They were like, oh, there's a movie in town. Like, you know, and they were so cool. Like uh, the, the, the residents were excited about it. The business owners were excited about it. They were just all about yeah. helping. They wanted to be involved. They wanted to find out what we were doing. They wanted, cool. they were, they couldn't have been better, yeah. honestly. Awesome. It, was, it was so cool. And we wouldn't have been able to do what we did if we had tried it in any city where anybody like was, was like aware of like what bigger movies pay. We were yeah. just, we just wouldn't have been able 100%, to do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's why you can't shoot, you know, anywhere near Hollywood yeah. or Atlanta or anything anymore. Like yeah. you have yeah. to come to places like Bernie because yeah. the business owners will be like, yeah, cool. that sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Hey, let yeah. me in. That's yeah. exciting. That's, yeah. that's new. That's something we haven't seen before. And then you know? last night I bought it on Amazon. A movie. A movie, yeah. Cop For versus full killer. Price. Cop versus killer. Yeah. Cop versus killer on Amazon. Full price on Amazon. I, I didn't even that. get a discount. And that's what it's called, right? <laughs> Cop versus killer is what it's called. It's okay. uh, I think the rental is like three bucks or yeah, something. But you, you can rent for, it. for but nine ninety nine. Own it. Nine ninety nine. Yeah. Was it's, it worth it? Give a hundred percent. Good. The whole bar watched it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know where you were. I was not here. <laughs> You'll watch it after this. Yeah, yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll talk yeah. shop. Yeah, we'll talk yeah. shop afterwards. Yeah. But what? awesome. And uh, what is the name of this place that you filmed in? Truth or consequences? And that's the name of a town. That is the yeah. name that of the town. Sounds like a threat. Yeah. That right? <laughs> it is ominous. Yeah. It is ominous and fitting. Uh, that we filmed down there because it's like kind of like a thriller, you know, and it's like this this small desert town kind of thriller. Um, I play a sheriff uh, who uh, gets attacked during a traffic stop, and the guy who attacks me takes my badge, uh, my car, and my gun, and begins posing as me, wreaking havoc through the town. Oh shit! And so I'm like trying to chase down the killer yeah. while also being mistaken for the killer because all all that's going over the radio oh, and so the news is against you. People are like the sheriff is yeah, killing because people. He puts like the cowboy yeah, hat yeah. on because yeah. he's a sheriff. So I yeah I and keep trying to explain like, like no 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 it's not me and like it keeps yeah so it's that kind of thing. Yeah, oh, shit. isn't there a reservoir up there called Elephant Butte? There is. <laughs> there is. Yeah. We filmed that part of it. We but, no but the way. the. Uh, the, the there's a rest area scene that is the overlook of that beautiful oh, location. Yeah. yeah. So it was so again they were able to they were accommodating us in every way we were able to get these great locations. Um, they, there were there were some catches with some locations. The bar that we shot at was perfectly happy to let us shoot there for two hundred bucks. It was called Raymond's. Um, the catch is uh, they had to stay open, and we were like, oh, we're gonna be there early. Yeah. We're gonna be this will be fine. Eleven a.m. Oh, the the regular crowd, the 11 a.m. crowd came in. in. Truth or consequences? Those to TOC Raymond's. people, to, to, they were in there early. Power drink at 11 a.m. and they loved. Bar. They loved that that the, a movie was being made for about an hour and a half. And, yeah, then, and then they realized they have to be quiet. When we started shushing them and started being like, can you move out of the shot a little bit? And then like, you know, telling them like when they're like talking during some of the scenes, yeah. we're like, hey guys, can you can you? And <laughs> then. People started to get a little irritated yeah. with us and started to get a little bit of an attitude. It's not everybody, but there yeah. was like a couple people who were like suddenly not happy that we were there. Yeah. And became one of many situations where it went from this is really cool to guys, we gotta get out of here. Cause yeah. like they're they're starting to get a little like we don't want it. This is their space. Yeah, so like yeah. we just gotta finish the movie and get out of here. So there was a lot of a lot of situations like that. We had another one where we were told we could film in a, a movie theater. They got this great old-timey movie theater called the El Cortez. Okay. And it's this beautiful theater. It's this, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know when it was built, but it's this like really old building. It looks really great. And initially I didn't have a movie theater scene, but but someone was like, oh, you gotta shoot in the old movie theater. So like I got what I thought was permission. Yeah. And we showed up and when we got there, the lobby was full of like, paint cans and, and a bunch of stuff. And we were like, oh, they must be remodeling or something. So we just pushed everything to the corners, set up our craft service, start setting up our shot in the theater. And I go out to check on something. And this woman is like stomping around, like looking. And then she like, in a huff goes outside and like, she's calling somebody. And I'm like, I should check on that. Yeah. So I go, uh, miss, can I help you? And she's like, um, yeah, no, no, no problem. Um, I rent this space. I'm a, I'm a local artist. And someone just moved all of my stuff. Uh-huh. 
And so I'm just calling the owner to like find out what the hell is going on. And I was like, oh, and I found out very quickly, we absolutely did not have permission to be there. Oh. And so I had to like sprint into the theater and be like, guys, we got to shoot this right now. We're yeah. about to get kicked out. And so we like the whole movie theater scene was shot in like an hour because oh, we were, I was like waiting for the, for them to come uh, oh, and wow. just kick us out of the theater. Yeah. And so that there was so many instances like that where we either thought we had permission or the scenes went way longer than we thought and the mm-hmm. location doesn't exist tomorrow. And so we have to like change the action on the fly to be like, okay, I know this was supposed to be like, uh, five deputies and two EMTs, and there was supposed to be this big thing, but here's the, here's the deal. We have one deputy, and that ambulance is about to leave. So now we're going to have, like, it was 10 shots. Now it's two shots, and now it's this and this. Like, we're just, you know, constantly, yeah. like, cramming the movie into what we had every yeah. day, trying to figure out what version of the movie we could make yeah. under those oh, circumstances. You, you, that, that's mm. the only way to do it, though. Yeah. Like, if you just go, oh, oh, oh man, we're getting kicked out, and then, no, no, it's... How do you make this work right now? Yep. How do you write around some of the description yep. and cheat it? Because yeah. again, you constantly you know, cheat. You can it. cheat a lot of this, like yeah. Like, we but you have to think like in the edit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're pre-editing in your head, being like, okay, I'm not getting what I wrote, but I'm watching it, being like, okay, I can use that. Uh, I can't use that. Ah, I can use that. And you're just kind of you're cutting it in your head. We had to do that with some of the action scenes too, because um, we filmed this uh, pretty shortly after the rust tragedy that happened. And so when we called the insurance company and mentioned blanks, they were like, you can't afford it. Like they were like, the the whole industry is going to change. Like, honestly, you're, you're a really small movie. Don't even ask. And so we're like, oh man, that's really tough. So there's a, there's a scene, uh, there's a shooting scene in that that involves a shotgun and so we couldn't even have real weapons on set because we weren't insured for it. So we ended up the shotgun that is used in the movie is a rubber replica that we spray painted. It's like a training weapon. It's yeah. normally red. We spray painted it black and we had to, we created a version of that scene where it was believable, but you had to hear a lot of what was happening instead of see a yeah, lot. Because yeah, yeah. we couldn't even rack it. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't, you, so we had to like, so my, the version of the scene immediately had to change on the day being like, oh, okay, yeah, no, he can't pull the trigger. We can't see any of the cartridges eject. He can't even pull the, the pump action. Okay, all right, new version, new version. New version. So like re- reimagining it every yeah. day, being like, okay, what's the version that I can cut together to give the feeling that we wanted to do? And, and it, it came out way better than it should have, like, yeah. but it was a great crash course in that kind of problem solving. How do you work around this? I yeah. mean, that's, that's what it is. Yeah, Reduction absolutely. Is, you're constantly throwing these these curveballs that you have to invent a way. Yeah, yeah, and committing creatively to a lot of things. Where it's like a lot of movies shoot coverage where you've got you get your wide, you get your overs, you get your singles, you get your inserts, all those stuff. And there were times where it was like we're we're out of here in 45 minutes. It's like okay, another oneer, guys. Okay, we start in here, we're on here, we're staying here, and then you step in, then we're pulling back, then we're this and we're that, and there's no coverage. It's like we're committing to this shot. This is the shot that's going in the edit because we don't have time. <laughs> and so several of those just became what, what ended up in the movie because we had no choice. And um, it's scary, but it also, it really builds your confidence when you get in the edit room and some of those work. Yeah. And you're like, oh man, I was kind of just making shit up, you know, because I didn't know what to do. So uh, yeah, it's been, it, it was it was a really exciting process. I'm super excited that it actually is out there. And it's something that I've wanted to do since, uh, since we did Enter the Dojo years ago. Like part of the point of creating Master Ken and doing like a web series thing was to figure out how to tell stories and get people to see them. Yeah. And then that took off and I kind of like, put the, the, the more traditional filmmaking process aside and always meant to come back to it and just kept not doing it yeah. and not doing it. And then the opportunity came up to do this and it was like, this feels like a now or never kind of thing. Like maybe we'll, I, 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 there were several reasons not to go ahead with the plan that we would not enough money, not enough time, all this other stuff. But I was like, I feel like this is never going to happen unless we do it now. Yeah. So we just decided to do now, it. Now did, when you were conceptualizing this, screenplay was this was this kind of part of the idea was you would be able to do it for cheap like knowing like okay absolutely so the first version of this that I wrote like 10 years ago was um it was when there was still the found footage genre was still a thing 
And it's like, it was kind of dying, but it was, it was still around. It was going mainstream and like a lot of bigger movies were doing the Blair Witchy kind of like uh, uh, every camera angle was motivated within the story. It's a security camera. Yeah. It's a phone. It's a this. And um, so I wrote it like that being like, oh, we could do this for nothing. Like this is just, we'll just do this with like, like crappy cameras and it will, it won't matter because, because the cameras even back then like weren't yeah. as good as they are today. Yeah. And, and it almost got made several, like, you know, a few times somebody was willing to give me like just a few bucks to like do it and then it would fall apart. And, uh, and then this version came up actually during COVID, uh, a friend of mine called me and he's like, Hey, I think I, I might have some money for that script that you've, that you've had around for a while. Um, he said, here's the catch. He's like, you got to cast Lou Ferrigno. He's like, Lou Ferrigno's got to be the bad guy. And I was like, that's cool. Sure, <laughs> sure. Incredible Hulk, why not? Sure, yeah. Okay, yeah, great. And so I, he was like, send me the script. I went to send him the script and I read it and I was like, oof, this is really outdated. This is clunky. And so I was like, give me a week. And so it ended up being two weeks. I just sat down, I did a page one rewrite and I threw out the found footage thing. I did not completely because there are elements yeah, of it. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of elements sprinkled in. But, but I, I released myself from the condition of like every camera angle has to be motivated by where the camera is. You know, it's got to be a, a badge camera, a dash camera, security camera. I was like, we'll pepper that in, but this is just a movie. We're just yeah. going to make this, we're going to shoot it like a movie. And that opened up all these possibilities and the, the next draft immediately became better because I was so limited in what I could do dramatically if the yeah. whole thing had to be motivated by those cameras. So it got way better. And we, I had a meeting with Lou and he loved the script. He was really excited about it. But the bad guy had almost no dialogue in that version. He was kind of like a Michael Myers sort yeah, of yeah. character. And Lou was like, I want to do this, but he's like, I want more to do. Yeah. Like, I want to know where this guy's from. I want to know his backstory. I want more to say and everything. So he gave me these great notes and I, and I did a rewrite based on that. And then he ended up having to drop out. But we had already raised the money based on his involvement. And when yeah. we told the investors, they were like, okay, well, I mean, just get somebody else then. And I was like, oh, so it's not dependent on Lou. Okay, cool. <laughs> and the notes he gave us greatly okay. improved yeah. the character. They were actually, a, a, so that was the benefit of having him involved even really briefly was that yeah. he made the character more interesting. His notes were really great. Yeah. So we kept all that and I got to cast my good friend, Kevin Bankins, um, who did an incredible job. Um, very talented uh, martial artist and uh, he's he's done very very little acting too. He's been in a couple of my little short films, yeah. uh, but he hasn't really done much of this. And this was like his feature debut. And he just he he not only was really impressive for the martial arts stuff because he and I've been training as martial artists together for years, and we knew each other when it came time to do the fighting and stuff like that. I knew he could pull it off. I knew that we could do the fights and stuff. But he also was surprisingly accessible as an actor, willing to really make himself vulnerable and he was constantly like just direct me like tell me what to do and like and he added a bunch of stuff that was that was so good that just uh, totally it was another lucky break where yeah. losing Lou felt like oh man that really hurt the film and then Kevin stepped Getting in him. and yeah. elevated the movie so awesome well you uh I mean I continue to see you pop into different movies all the time you were in Sicario I was in Sicario <laughs> Like and in a scene with Benicia del Toro and who else? Like, like Emily, Emily Blunt. Blunt. So, yeah, yeah. No, so so I get invited. They never tell us anything. When you when you're a local actor getting cast in a movie, you get like this much script yeah. and you read it, and they don't tell you anything about the movie. And I suppose I could do research, but who has the time? And and uh, I got invited to a rehearsal, and I was like, a rehearsal? Who the hell rehearses? And we got I got brought in. And next thing I know, I'm like in this uh, this motel room that's built on a soundstage and Emily Blunt and Benicio Del Toro and Josh Brolin and Roger Deakins, you know, who shoots all the, the best living cinematographer in the business. And I'm like, holy shit, oh my God, oh shit, you know? And, uh, and uh, Denis, the director who did uh, uh, Dune and uh, Prisoners and Blade Runner 2049 and all that stuff, he's there and... It's the most terrifying, th it's awesome, but also the most terrifying thing to be the least important person in the room. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm Don't the only the reason this fucks up. I'm the most yeah, replaceable, yeah. I'm the most replaceable person in that room, and yet 
it is important that I say my two lines correctly when I'm supposed to say them. Otherwise, all of these movie stars like have to start over. Yeah. And so it's just, I've been in several situations like that where it's like, I'm happy to be here and yet, oh God, what if I fuck up my, my two lines? <laughs> And and uh, and even then, I said I, whatever the original line was. We did one rehearsal before we were about to to shoot the next day, and then Denis comes up and he says, hey, "What is your line?" And I said it, and he's like, eh, "Yeah, uh, don't say that. Uh, be a, you know, you are military, so say it like a real, like a, the military guy would." Okay, rolling, and I'm like, "The fuck does that mean?" <laughs> and I like you know, and whatever I said is in the movie, and apparently he was happy with it because yeah. it didn't take issue. Yeah. But uh, the other ironic thing about it is that like I'm I'm in that one scene. The still photographer that day was taking publicity stills, and they took a still of Emily, Benicio, Josh, and me, and that became the promotional still, like at Cannes. It's on the back of the Blu-ray. Oh hell yeah! And so people I went to high school like congratulations, and I'm like, so listen, I'm not really in the movie. Like yeah. I'm in the movie, but <laughs> yeah. like I'm in it for like <laughs> yeah. ten seconds. Yeah, so like yeah. thank you. Yeah. But this isn't like my big break. Big break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so be, yeah. but being peripherally, it's been really fun to just sort of peripherally be on those kind of productions. Uh, like uh, I was on this, I did this movie, uh, though it was a pilot actually, it was called Vegas. It had um, Mike Chiklis in it, Dennis Quaid, <laughs> and James Mangold directed I, I, the pilot. I, I think I heard Dennis Quaid lives here. No kidding. Somebody was telling me that I need to link up with him. You should. Really fun. Yeah, no, it was, it was, and it was this kind of fun. It was like, I was excited to be there, but James Mangold, like Copland and, you know, uh, uh, the uh, Logan and like, you know, I mean, big director, uh, he was on there and man, he was, he was intense. He was very intense. They were behind schedule and they had this really, you had to get like another really complicated tracking shot where they like built this ramp and the steady cam was supposed to see all of these uh, Jeeps pull up and then they were going down to like the lead Carrie Ann Moss uh, from the Matrix was yeah. was in it and like they had this really complicated tracking shot and like and, and at the very end of the tracking shot I'm just supposed to run in this guy's like what's your name deputy and I go Armstrong sir and then that's the end of the that's like pretty much the end of the scene and so yet again I'm the guy that can fuck up the entire tracking shot if I just like don't yeah. And and I and they start me on like an embankment that's like fifty feet away, so I don't end up in the shot. So I have to time like I have to like run fifty yeah. feet in and like hit my mark and do my thing. And I'm like already nervous. And then Mangold is kind of having a bad day, you know, like like it, like part way through some of the shots, he's just like going, "Cut, Jesus Christ!" He's like, "Who the fuck is driving these jeeps?" He's like. he was like a little slower and I was like yes sir hmm. and that was the only note they gave me and yeah. I got through the whole thing but like the number of times where I've been like the guy with the line that has the opportunity to ruin everybody else's work is kind of the most terrifying <laughs> yeah. I would rather have a page of dialogue because like you can you can screw up a couple things and they're like yeah that was pretty good just clean, clean that part up yeah. when you have one line it's like oh god <laughs> I'm going to ruin the whole thing I'm going to ruin the whole thing so it's terrifying. So I, I, I'm, I haven't had one of those in a while where it's like I have like one thing to do and it's mine to ruin and yeah. It's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, a bit. So. Well, I mean, like I was watching Maze Runner the other day and I oh, yeah. hear his voice and I'm like, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> Just popping up in these little snippets. We, of, we need to get, we need to, if someone needs to cast us to be eating in the background in a movie. Oh, that'd be fun. You yeah. can get that work. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Do we have to, do we have to audition? Can yeah, I eat for the audition? You no, know, you do, you do. Yeah, I do have to, you have to audition. You have to audition. Yeah, yeah. Darn. And you know, yeah. I don't think, I don't <laughs> feel. Oh, but, but I could, but I could eat, but I could eat. Yeah, yeah, for yeah the you audition. can eat in the room. Yeah. You can eat in the room. <laughs> you were saying last night though, that like, oh, you're here still. Oh, we go. This oh. is that, this is that image. What is it? Oh shit! Oh, right. That's it. That's the yeah. that's the Sicario image. Yeah. Doesn't it look like I'm in that movie? Yeah. Oh yeah, it looks like, like you guys are friends. Yeah, yeah, it's like I'm I'm an integral part of yeah. the plot line yeah. as far as that picture is concerned. Yeah. And then like no, no, I'm just like I'm just there for a second. 
<laughs> but you were saying last night, like, you know, after watching the movie, you get this thing of like, do you want to do another one? Like, oh yeah, you... when I see, when I, when I, yeah, when I when I get to watch your work, it's like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I want to do it again. Yeah, I'll do it again. <laughs> right, right. The whole misery, like all the misery, you just need enough time to forget how hard it is to to get through that process and whatever time that is, and then you know, do do another do another production. Yeah, well, I mean, me and Harley were even going deeper of like like talking about how to hire for it like if we do one to be like when we do choose it's it's like hey like this isn't this isn't just cash it's like you're here to make this thing yeah like you're here to make it you're here to make it to the end yeah so there's no fighting with other departments there's no I'm better. I mean, or, hopefully. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. <laughs> As, you know, whatever. freaking freaking art got in a fight? What? Why? Because <laughs> an extension cord was in the wrong place? Like, I'm going to die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those kinds of things that, like, you you kind of, it's, it is hard to prepare for that, like, that do end up being a problem. But, and also picking a movie that you definitely want to live with Kind of forever. Like you have to live with it every day for the duration of like until it's out and you're promoting it everything. But yet it's always there. Well, do you want to, if you do it again, do you want to direct and lead or do you just want to direct now? Because that's that's where I'm on the fence too, where right. like I would just put myself in a Quentin scene, yep. kind of. But if I'm gonna direct, like I can't, I can't be yeah. there. Like, cause you know how difficult this is now. You know, I def definitely understand that perspective, and yet at the same time, because I've been doing Master Ken for so long, like you direct your own stuff and you act in it, like yeah. you know, and like that was actually easier. That was one of the easier parts of it. Yeah, yeah. Like if you're in the mode of performing for yourself, reviewing a take and being like, "That was a good one. That was not a good one." Mm -hmm. I feel like I've had like a decade of practice now, yeah. learning when I feel like on or my, when my timing was off a little bit or I feel like I can do that a little better. Yeah. Um, so that part, I don't know. I, I feel like that, what it makes me think of is like a lot of the action guys that I really loved watching growing up that had to kind of build roles for themselves in order to like, you know, Stallone and like Jean-Claude Van Damme has a writing credit on like a bunch of the stuff that he did earlier in his career. Him and Sheldon Lettich like yeah. wrote a bunch of stuff with like the seven things he could say in English, <laughs> you notice that he's got like the he's well. The now that you've yeah. now that you've also said that too, it made me realize that it's one less personality that you have to deal with that could tank sure. the whole project. Absolutely, like, yeah. Because if if he if your lead wakes up and is having an existential crisis or some shit. and you're just like, oh god, yeah. And you hear those stories about those productions. You know, there's like yeah. a, a, they won't come out of their trailer. There's been a lot. There's been story. You know, a lot of the people that I work with in, in the New Mexico film industry have been on those productions where like a certain star too drunk won't show up till noon and yeah. like refuses to shoot unless it's like this stuff, right? Like they'll do yeah. this stuff and then they'll just leave and they'll be like, figure it out. And then like they're trying with their doubles to just like yeah. piece together the scene and so. So yeah, that is one simplification that I know that I'm going to be, I'm already going to be there if yeah. I'm directing. So I'm, you know, might as yeah. well, try, you know, and if I wrote it, it's like, I kind of know the lines I wrote them. Yeah. And so that might actually, that's a good, that is a good argument. In fact, if anybody accuses them of all being vanity projects, I'll be like, well, no, this is just simpler because yeah. like, I'm already easier. here. And, yeah. Well, I know just, what I want, so I'm going to do it. Yeah. I yeah. just happen to need, yeah, the, I, I need I'm to be the lead this for much time <laughs> in this. Like why I just going to, I don't want anybody to be able to screw it up. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to write a movie? Yes, I do. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Like, obviously I know it'd be a lot of issues, but like, I know, like I know we would do it. Yeah. Like I yeah. know, like even if it gets harder, it sucks. Like, we're gonna do it. Yeah. So I think that'd be a lot of fun. You should do. I, I think we should start riding. I think it's, we should. You really should because it yeah. is. It is one of the most rewarding things Absolutely. I've ever done. Absolutely. Yeah. Like doing something so difficult, uh, and despite Absolutely. all the challenges, like yeah, I'm so yeah. glad that's, I did. No it. one just makes movies. No. Yeah. Like, I mean, no one. A, very few people write exactly. a ninety-page yeah, screenplay. Write a movie now to have and then it. make it. Yeah. Be in it. Direct, produce, like. All of it, like yeah. that's nobody does that. Yeah. So that's awesome. I think I, yeah. I, I would love to see what you guys would come yeah, up with. Yeah, because, I, I, I yeah like exactly, that. dude. Because I, I mean, I, 
I I have not done a full ninety page script on my own. Yeah. So I would love I would like to to challenge that. Yeah. Like. Yeah, I, I would love to see it. I'd love to see what you guys come up. Been with very this. crucial to the mechanics of a lot of screenplays of like okay. It moves from here to here to here because yeah. I have that mindset of price yep. and and time. Yep. So I've helped a lot with that, but but I've never like been like okay. And want. when it's your script, like you do, especially if you've done several drafts and you know the thing backwards and forwards, when you do run into those production limitations, you can be like, you as the writer know, okay, what is the point of this scene? Like yeah. I don't have like, I just the location's smaller than I thought it would be. I don't have as much time as I thought to do the this action but like what's the point of this and if i know as the writer what the point of the scene was like okay so as long as i have this and this the scene still works yeah. and you can just make that decision because you know the movie because that's your movie like yeah. you you wrote it so like i mean i i think that'd be i would really yeah, love to see what you guys come yeah. up yeah that would be a lot of fun that's a I loved you in the music video. I saw the music video yesterday. What was it? What's the oh, name of the song? Yeah, Which hey, one? Uh, Texas Tornadoes. Oh yeah, hey baby, yeah. K Paso. Yeah, that, that was, was fun. awesome. That was fun, man. Yeah, yeah that, <laughs> that whole video was so good. Dude. Yeah, like, every like I watch it every now and then. I'm like, man, like that movie. That was a killer video. Dude. Yeah, Just, like, that, the whole that is thing was so fun. Here, it really music is, video. man. The yeah. editing is so good. The little sound effects and shit. Edgar, like it's yeah. just, it's all so funny. Yeah, the production there, value yeah. is fantastic. The graphics fantastic, and everything, man. and the song is great. Like, it, yeah. dude, yeah, it is. It's a great catchy song. Like we listen to it pro almost every day. Like, I've so. done, I think, three music videos, yeah. and they're not. I'm not good at it. I love the freedom that it kind sure. of gives you. Yeah. Like you can play around with narrative and style in a way that you can't really get away with. In, you know, it would be like film school bullshit. Yeah. If yeah. you were to just do it as a narrative, it would be like surrealism or something like that. But it's like a mainstream version where you can you can try all these crazy ideas that probably wouldn't work in any other format. Yeah. And watching that one, I was like, God, I really, I wish I was good at making music videos because I love yeah. the format so yeah. much. I'm trash at it, but I have a couple other friends. I got a buddy of mine, Alejandro Montoya, who's from... Uh, the film scene in Albuquerque. He's been in LA. He's on like he's just wrapped his uh, his fourth feature film. But he does music videos, and he's got like a great sense of style. Yeah. And that kind of you know there were a lot of elements like that that I was noticing in your guys' music video. Where I was like, that's like one of the funnest formats you can do. You like, do whatever. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. like anything that you anything have you access yeah. to. Well, it was so cool because we premiered it here in town, and Zeus is very popular in this yeah. town yeah. as a, as a Tejano rapper. The place was packed, like, and then you saw, like, uh, you know, Jack introduced this the song and yeah. the video in character as as Buffu, like, so like at first you you see a, the the crowd like very like what, what is, is this Louisiana guy that's <laughs> yeah. yelling at this us kind of right boss now? hog kind of character? And then you like, watch them watch <laughs> this whole thing, and like Jack instantly became a superstar in <laughs> in this establishment for the rest of the night. Yeah. Like, he, his character is hilarious. He did a great job directing it too. Yes. Like yes. it was a great video. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I uh, if people watching should check it out if they haven't seen it. It's yeah, so yeah. cool. Definitely see that music video. That's it. We got to step our game up now. We do, man. That's our next big goal. Yeah. Like, I think so. It'd be fun. We. What's the number one thing you want to do in a movie? Like, if it's a movie. I want it to be funny, dude. Yeah. Like, I want to. Yeah. Okay. I want to. I want to. There's not been many good funny. comedies yeah. for years, yeah. man. And I would love to bring one back that's just dude, ridiculous. Dude, we have to just look at movies just like go, Office Space. Because yeah. Office Space was only shot in like five locations. Mm -hmm. You have the apartment, yeah, the restaurant, shit. and the. Yeah, yeah all we, we could need. do it. A lot of it here, a lot of it just local shit. Like, mm -hmm. you've got. You've got a whole farm. You've got this whole place. We've got friends that have places. We've got all the locations. Exactly, like, dude. Like, like we could probably do location wise next to nothing. Like we talked yeah. to the owner yeah. of the Rill the other day, and he's like, "You guys dude, can film whatever you want." Every time I come in there, they're like, "Caleb, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like, yeah, awesome." No, that's something I would do. I like if I do another one that is kind of like if I just sort of like pull together some money and yeah. and do figure that out. I would do the opposite of what I did with this one where sure. I'm, I would make a list of all the resources I have first mm -hmm. yeah. and then write around that because I did the opposite where I was like, well, I was thinking I would like sell the scripts. I was like, ah, limitations. So I wrote like a dozen locations yeah. and like that. There was a, Somebody was trying to help me actually when I was first, when, when we were gearing up and we had like half the money and we weren't quite there and I was like trying to figure out how to fit the movie and what we had. I had someone who had done producing read it for me 
just to help me with casting. And, and she called me up like the second she finished the script. And she's like, how much money did you say you had? And I told her, and she was like, do you know how many speaking roles you have in this film? I was like, 27? She was like, 52. She's like, you have characters come in and they say one thing and then you never see them again. She's like, you need to get rid of all of those. So like all of a sudden, there was like six deputies. Suddenly there became one deputy with a whole bunch of dialogue, yeah. you know, where it was like, oh man, I can't do, I can't do most of this. So all these characters had to be either cut or condensed into like yeah. the 20 people I could afford to hire for the sure. whole movie. And so I would do that in reverse too, where it's like, that, but you know, halfway through this film, I was like, the next movie is a haunted house movie movie every single damn scene in this movie it's like yeah. it's gonna be six people yeah. and one location because I'm not gonna fuck around yeah. with like trying to get from one location to the next location the next location so, <laughs> so that's I a, like I got a question in context for the audience as well is uh, you say you had all these speaking roles and they speak like one line and that's it yeah what does that mean to your budget if you if you have yeah. that many small roles so because it was a sag movie it's like we had to we like that costs us more money every time an actor speaks, they have to be paid a certain amount yeah. and there's the, all of the union issues apply to that. And so like it costs us way more money. And so, whereas if someone, and you see this in, in like low budget movies too, where like a waiter goes from, here's your check to, yeah, and then like that just saved you several hundred dollars, you yeah. know, like just yeah. to have them not say anything. So that was a budgetary constraint where like all of a sudden a whole bunch of people didn't really need to be cast. Where like okay. it just simplified the thing, made it faster, made it cheaper, and that is another thing that I wasn't really thinking about until we were suddenly trying to cram what was probably a five hundred thousand dollar movie into just shy of a hundred thousand dollar budget where it was like, oh man, we don't have enough money for any of this. Yeah. Like we're just gonna have to cram this movie into what we have. <laughs> mm. I think you and I could come up with I think we could come up with really good. <laughs> Funny, I mean but is there something you specific you want here's the reason I'm asking. I've wanted to do <clears throat> I love Michael Bay movies. Of course. And mainly I love what great... I love Michael Bay, but I, I feel like Michael Bay movies make the best trailers yeah. ever. Yeah. True. Because he gets yeah. such incredible it's footage. Insane. yeah. I am not going to say that Pearl Harbor is a good movie, but I still sometimes just pull up the trailer to get all emotional. Yeah. Because like the, the trailer's so good. It's, it, all of it. The is promise yeah. of what the trailer, uh -huh. like the yeah. movie did not, in my opinion, sure. did not fulfill the promise. Yeah. But the trailer had me all like You're worked like, up. Yeah. And I was like, I want that. Ben, there's a shot in there where Ben Affleck is like running in slow motion yep. and his shirt is all like, like gr you know, Burn ripped up, and burnt and yeah, up yeah. and yeah. he's got a rifle in his hand and he's yeah. like, yeah. And I was like, I want that. I want that moment where you're like running and you're like, ah, you know? <laughs> so I like yeah. pick these little things that I've seen in other movies and I'm like, I, gotta well, so I, I want did, that I specific that, thing. Yeah. You know? For Range 15, that's why I did the the the, the rock portion where I jumped down with the smoke bombs in my the, the, hand. Like, the, like the Nick, Nick Cage by. calling in the airstrike, <laughs> that, like being, trying to call it off. that's like, why I did that. Oh, I was like, God. dude, what if we did this? Yeah, right? Having those, you but, like have those snippets of like, I've got to do that in removing a movie Removing my, my <laughs> sense of reality right now of like, of like trying to be realistic. Sure. Um, I would love, like, like if everything was on the table, I've always wanted I, I always thought that it would be hilarious if we were able to team up with Broken Lizard and the film was they all got fired from, from Maine yeah. and we all just got out of the military and now we're border patrol agents in Arizona and we're trying to stop Travis and his motorcycle like gang from smuggling. That and would like, be so but, incredible. But we're two opposite shifts and we hate each other. So it's <laughs> it's it's... it's the broken lizard of the military, right. so our whole crew against broken lizard, and we're just going back. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. And especially since those guys, even after, like, if you watch um, uh, the guy, uh, the, the head guy. Um, Farva. Yeah, yeah. You watch, like, their um, interviews of doing the Super Trooper sequel kind of on their own. Yeah. Because they couldn't get it. Funded the way yeah, they, they wanted. Yeah, funded it. Yeah, like they're and they're they're familiar. Even and it's weird. Even seeing guys that like groups that have clearly kind of supposedly established themselves, um, still not to be able to get stuff done. So they just go and do it on their own. And you guys do that already. Like yeah. where you have your own productions, you've got your own uh, resources and everything. Like I mean, it would be kind of a cool team up. You also kind of like 
what I forgot about is how, and I, I really did kind of just overlook this until we've been talking about this for two days, is the amount of currency I have now having done this. Yep. Like, I can go pitch, and if we had a good plan, it's likely we would get a yes. Because yeah. I have a I have a film that went to theaters. I have a film that was black in, within, within a week. Yep. Like, Okay, that's what they're asking. Yeah, like, exactly. Like it's like, like, yeah, we've done this before. <laughs> right, right. Are you gonna, like, are you going to lose us money? Are you going to make us yeah. money? And can you do this? If so it's like agree? now, it's 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 kind of up to us. We have to Maybe fucking dig in and be, get yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like, I would love to see you in a Bollywood movie, like, <laughs> yeah. like Master I would, Ken. That's in what Bollywood. I, no, like, um, uh, that what's the, the they have those action series ones where the action is just insane. You see clips. Of yeah, them on on time, Instagram and dude. stuff, where they're the guy is like uh, like flipping a car and then like jumping up on it <laughs> and while then it's kicking like, it. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. He was there, like <laughs> be so good, like that dude. kind of action, yeah. right? Yeah. Like oh, yeah. that's yeah, that's that's the type of action. Like if Ken was ever going to be in an action movie, yeah. it would have to be like a bigger than life kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. It can't be based in reality. It's yeah, got to be like all. it's got to turn out that Ken is actually everything he's ever, <laughs> ever said, said he is. Yep. Instead of him like being, I feel like people would expect for him to be exposed as a fraud, and then nah. it turns out it's like it's it's, it's like what if the dust guy was actually the biggest badass and like the, the mm -hmm. Detroit dust guy yeah. was like the biggest badass in the world and it's he's actually <laughs> all of his stuff he's been secretly it's, fighting it's crime real. for it's years it's like matrix shit like, have you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've seen Kung Fury haven't you fuck yeah dude, dude that was, yeah. what happened right? to that yeah. guy like yeah. that movie killed yeah. and then I never I don't know if I ever saw anything after that I thought yeah. no I literally just talked to somebody I can't sit I'll have to tell you after the show oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's Something big is happening with those guys. I just I, happened to talk to somebody who's working on I'm it. Glad and I'm glad to hear. Like, I'm right. gonna. I'll, I'll tell because you because he did that all himself. Yeah, and it was yeah. magnificent. And it yeah. went on Netflix too. Like, yeah. to get a 30, 40 minute film on Netflix. Like, the thing that I loved so much about that was that they called it Kung Fury the movie. Yeah, and like it, when they first did their crowdfunding, I thought, oh well, man, you know, they'll they'll like. I was expecting like a full length movie, and then they released whatever a thirty four minute yeah. movie yeah, or something. Yeah. They put it on YouTube, got like ten million views, and then everybody picked it up, Hulu and Netflix and all that stuff, and nobody was like. Hey, that wasn't enough movie. They were yeah. like, no, that was fine. No, that was uh, 34 yeah. minutes. Oh, dude, like you they beat were... the shit out of an arcade game and then fucking rode a dinosaur? Fuck, I feel <laughs> fine. Yeah. Right. It was, they got exactly what they wanted yeah. out of it, right? Yeah. I, and that is another thing that I do love about the sort of the the creator space that like all the different platforms have accustomed us to is that anything you create can be whatever length it feels like it needs to be. Yeah. Like you don't have to create something that is like a technically it doesn't have sure. to be an hour and a half. Like yeah. you can create whatever length that's supposed to be and give it to fans. And if they like it, they'll champion that's it. it yeah. And so it's, you're not as, you know, you are, if you want to go through the traditional distribution um, yeah, yeah. models, but like, if you want to just release it to your fans and release it to the people who watch online, like there's so much good stuff that like, whatever the length is, like if they like it, they like it. And you're not constricted by that anymore. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just in this loop now of whatever this fucking monstrosity of a movie is that's going to come out of your mind. Yeah, I want to yeah. figure out, like, I want to hear, like, what you guys are going <laughs> to... Like, like, I honestly oh, think it would be hilarious if you you somehow find a fucking freaky book like that and accidentally awake a demon in a house yeah. and, like, yeah. all of us keep getting picked off. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> there's just so... Yeah. But it's funny as shit. Yeah, yeah. It's like Dale yeah. and Tucker do evil. Yeah. Like, you end up having Having a suit up in your armor, yeah, you, know, yeah, like you have to put a fucking helmet and on and a sword. And shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. people would watch it. Yeah, there's plenty of ways we could go with a movie, dude. Just use screaming. Right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think we could really put ourselves to the test doing something like that. It'd be a lot of fun. You know what won't be allowed on set though? Full throttles. <laughs> <laughs> We're having them after this. We're, We're having them. You're, you're having one after this. I don't want to. I don't want you to be completely open minded. Harley picked up a bunch of them, didn't he? Oh, yeah. yes. He's like, I saw uh, a bag of them. Oh. Dude. Have you had a full throttle before? I've not. Man, 
<laughs> it's, it's, it's just a, it's just nostalgic, dude. It's yeah. like I grew up in a super small town, like a holler, yeah. uh, gas station at the end of the holler. They had two energy drinks, Monster and Full Throttle. Okay, growing up, that's what they had. Wasn't a big fan of Monster at the time. Full Throttle was my like that was my nectar, dude. Okay, it's just like a it's like a citrusy like grapefruit energy drink. It was great. So like nectar, if like when like a hummingbird mm-hmm. drank it, that their heart me. would explode. No, like they no, would no, use, no, it was just like, this it was is, he's drinking pure life, battery. Yeah, it's, it it's like, like, drinking battery acid what, over here. And he doesn't even know. <laughs> he keeps ha- 700 he keeps, grams of sugar in it. Oh my it. God. It doesn't. It's got, it's got like 34. It's like, it's like a regular <laughs> basic energy drink. Nah, it's got okay. zero calories. Okay. Yeah, man, it was all I had. Dude, I can remember we would go hiking and shit and I would carry my little like, have you seen those deer skin like water jugs? Yeah. I would buy two because it was like two two full throttles for three dollars. And I would fill that fucking two of thing up with like one and so like three horrible. fours and I'd like just chug the rest of the other one. He's gonna need and a we, kidney and transplant. We would, we, would, we would hike all day, dude, like through the mountains for fucking hours and I'd just be chugging like hot full throttle, man. <laughs> Is this what you You didn't even put like ice in it? You're well, just drinking I, like I mean, hot. Like, yeah, like, hey, just, hey, it just, it, it, just got, story. it just got hot throughout the day, dude. So So is this what you're gonna be washing down the epic Mealtime, yes. like you're gonna. Yes, be having, we should, dude. Oh, oh, oh we're gonna make. Yeah, we're gonna make a pie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gonna, it's like a Chick Fil A, Chick Fil A yeah. pot pie. Yeah, yeah. With full throttle to wash it down. No, yeah, no, no. we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna have a big like tub of full throttle. Dude. It's just like we're pitcher. We're handing. You do it like a keg forth. stand with yeah, like exactly. full throttle, like. But he's never God. even tried it, and he just trash talks it all the time. And I'm like, you can't do that. Like you got to try You're it. You're drinking cheap so, battery acid. So Harley got a few of them for us to all try. I feel like that's a potential viral moment if you never had it. I feel like I want to share my favorite nutrition fact off of a full throttle. Okay. Uh, so it has total sugars in one can is 55 grams. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. It's a lot. And that, is, that includes 55 grams of added sugars. All of the sugar in there is added. Just extra for the fuck of it. Yeah. <laughs> They don't play over there at football. <laughs> you guys are, yeah, you guys are down here like. Burn, burn, burn. I'm getting heart palpitations yeah, just dude, thinking about will, drinking man. it. I and feel I'm like. Fucking, burn, burn, burn. <laughs> That's what you're going to be doing, dude. Oh, you like that. It, it does have 500% of your daily vitamin B12. So. Yeah, dude. Oh, so there's some why, health. Why there's some 500%. Health. 500%, 500% dude. is the ceiling of what if you, if you, you, you need. No, your body perform. might, maybe. We don't know that your body doesn't store that. Like, we might, we're probably not 100% sure about that. Like, we're discovering things every Every day, you know, yes, like that. I am. You are not a scientist. Are you, look at my science experiment. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's God willed. How old is this? Existence. This is 22 weeks old. Or okay. 22, yeah, weeks old. Yeah. 22 yeah. weeks. It's okay. a chicken yeah. sandwich, by okay. the way. It's not a cheeseburger. Yeah. All right. When do you eat it? Once he's 100. I want to turn on. <laughs> yeah, I said, okay. once he turns 100 years old, he has to eat this. <laughs> so did you guys have a premiere? We did like, sort of. We showed it a couple of times in... Uh, we showed it a couple of times in New Mexico, and then we just had an L.A. screening. Uh, one of the actors in it is Chris Casamasa, who uh, played Scorpion in the original Mortal Kombat. Man, that's a oh. good movie. Yeah, yeah that's right? Cool. And Way so he was so psyched. Auto. He was like, I, he, that was one of many favors I called up, like when I was like, hey, man, I need you to come to the middle of nowhere in New Mexico, and I can't really pay you. And he was like, I'll tell you, we'll figure out. It's like, he said, come do a Master Can appearance and and we'll trade it. And I was like, awesome, cool. And, and then so you were like, like, get over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Hi-yo>. hey. <laughs> I, know, I can't believe I didn't get him to say that line. Yeah. Um, but uh, he arranged a screening that we just did out in LA and people had a blast. We did it at Universal City at the AMC Theater, the Universal oh, City awesome. Walk. Because cool. that's, that's a payoff. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's like getting to watch people watch the movie mm-hmm. and talk about how we made it and everything. And that was a blast. And we got to have a lot of the actors there. Uh, Zeta Zhang, who's a, a female professional wrestler, yeah. uh, the most popular recurring guest on the Master Ken show. Every one of her episodes has at least 200,000 views. She like People love yeah. uh, her as a personality. She did a great job. Uh, uh, Selena De La Renta, who's another professional wrestler uh, in uh, based out there. Uh, she is in Florida and L.A. Uh, yeah, I mean, just a lot of great. Uh, this every all the actors were really great, and then we had a lot of local talent. Rachel, who played uh, the the reporter, who you guys really got to kick out of, like <laughs> Heather yeah. the reporter. <laughs> yeah, she was like she was uh, she was really great. Like all the actors uh, were so good. Uh, I just I I was able to, I was glad I was able to call in so many people that I knew and just be like, hey, like 
we'll try to do this really fast. I don't have much money, but like, you know, I, I'll promise I'll try to make it as much fun as we can. And they were game for it. So like, yeah, Hell yeah. yeah. Cop versus killer, baby. Yeah. yeah. Check it out on Amazon. Please watch it. And if you watch it and you like it, rate it yeah. and review it. It helps us get out to more people. If you don't like it, just keep that to yourself. And yeah, buy yeah. it. Just bury it deep don't, down. Yeah. I, I recommend <laughs> yeah. just buy it. Don't rent it because the more of you that buy it, the more another one gets to be yeah, made. Yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. That's what, exactly. that's what I'm yeah, hoping. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Buy that thing. Like, 10 bucks, yeah. dude. You, yeah. could, you could sell and one picture of your you're, fate you're pushing that You're yeah. pushing that button to, 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 to get number two. Yeah, that's like, right. Yeah, that's awesome. right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, a, maybe a performance by Master Ken in another medium, you know, mm -hmm. like maybe oh, we, finally we seeing the full power of Master mm -hmm. Ken. Oh, so like, we need to bring yeah, yeah. Master Ken into a horse karate commercial with oh, us. Oh, yeah, dude. And he's just <laughs> like, chopping on the up, man. Yeah, dude. Well, we could, I mean, when we get those horse heads that I'm going to get for some videos, um, have you seen the ballistic dummies that have yeah. like, uh, it's like the jail, but it has like all the organs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That same company, I've talked about this a couple times now. Same company makes horse heads. And I was like, that would be hilarious. Why do they make, why do they make, uh, just to, Kill them just to show what a what a cannon would do to, to a, a horse. horse head. If yeah. you were gonna fight a horse, to, if yeah. You were... If a force were to attack you and you had a, a cannon, it's gonna show what would happen. Okay, finally that yeah. question that, is I've answered. I've been wondering, like... dude. So yeah, I'm gonna order. I think he, he gave me a good bargain deal. I think I'm gonna try and get four of them. He gave and, you a bargain on yeah, the horse yeah, heads. on the four horse heads. So uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna get those and we'll we'll use those for some fun videos. I want to do the cannon. I want to build the ballista because that's what I want the video yeah, to be. Yeah, the ballista. Building the ballista and shooting horses with it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think I think that'd just be so ridiculous and funny. But also ending with a cannon. We'll try some other things on the other two and yeah. see what's the funnest. But I think Master Ken just he coming in and seeing like what of kind of well, like it's a Maradote versus yeah. horsepower. Yeah. Yeah. Like what you, know you know can what I mean? do. Yeah. Like just. I think that'd be great. <laughs> I'm all about it. Reaches through a horse's head. <laughs> That's just how powerful you are. Yeah. You just pull the whole skull out. Yeah. Just out of the gelatin. Yeah, out of its I just have yeah. carrying what? the skull around. God, this was great. I loved it. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, this was awesome. Thanks for having me.